terms of legacy, people remember the great villains more than they remember the great heroes. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shocking reveals in Victoria's Secret, Angels and Demons. Business is going south. Wouldn't that lead you to say, what's going on here? For this list, we're looking at the most scandalous things we learned from the Hulu docuseries. From the inner workings of the lingerie juggernaut to former CEO Les Wexner's relationship with Jeffrey Epstein, these facts made our jaws drop. What's your current perception of the Victoria's Secret brand? Let us know in the comments below. I was happy to leave, go home, and cry in a bathtub <laughs> and say, God, I got that over with. Number 10. Les Wexner gave Jeffrey Epstein power of attorney. One of the main investigations of the docuseries is the relationship between businessman Les Wexner and convicted felon Jeffrey Epstein. Wexner had the money that Epstein was seeking, and Wexner got from Epstein the glamour and smoothness that he was seeking. Epstein operated as Wexner's financial manager for more than 20 years. The two men were unusually close, and Epstein acquired much of Wexner's wealth and property over the course of their friendship. He managed his investments, he managed his businesses. There wasn't a part of Wexner's empire that Epstein didn't have access to and, and didn't have some ability to control. Epstein was never technically employed by Bath & Body Works, Inc., nor Victoria's Secret, but he had unprecedented power in Wexner's business and personal affairs. This was largely due to the power of attorney that Wexner signed over to Epstein, a move which was highly unusual. Considering the billionaire's intelligence and tendencies to micromanage, his decision to give so much unchecked power to Epstein is not only unprecedented. It's perplexing. Les was a micromanager and someone who was involved in every aspect of the business. I couldn't believe that Les would let that happen. Number nine, Epstein kept a woman captive on Wexner's estate. Epstein's house was just one of hundreds in a community developed by Les Wexner. And what our reporting indicated was that it was in fact impossible to access Epstein's property without going through Wexner's gate. While Wexner hasn't been accused of any misconduct himself, it's hard to believe he didn't have some knowledge of any nefarious activity going on. One of Epstein's properties happened to be Wexner's guest house in New Albany, Ohio. In the summer of 1996, the financier invited a young artist named Maria Farmer to stay in his house on the Wexner property, but the visit ended poorly for Farmer. She was told that she couldn't go outside without getting explicit permission, and she was told that there were guard dogs on the property. She accused Epstein and his former associate, Ghislaine Maxwell, of sexual assault. After barricading herself in a her room, Farmer claimed she was held captive on the property despite calls to 911 and the police. In fact, the police were already on site guarding the Wexner property line, but were reportedly unwilling to help Farmer. Maria said she was held against her will for a period of 12 hours before she was allowed to leave the Wexner property. Number eight, executives cracked jokes about misconduct while it was rampant. In the wake of the Me Too movement, multiple allegations of sexual misconduct were made against people who worked for Victoria's Secret. One man in particular, former chief marketing officer Ed Razek, has been the subject of a lot of criticism. New York Times reportedly uncovered a slew of complaints against Ed Razek, saying he acted inappropriately on several occasions. Other executives say they told Leslie Wexner about this, but nothing was done, they say. Razik is accused of making sexist and fat-phobic comments, creating a culture of misogyny within Wexner's company. His assistant supposedly cracked jokes about how many harassment complaints were made against him. Ed's assistant made a comment. She said, if I had a dollar for every time a sexual harassment case came across my email, I'd be rich. And like Ed laughed, other people laughed. Razik eventually left the company after Vogue reported on his sexist and transphobic standards. However, the amount of complaints he racked up during his time at Victoria's Secret indicates a greater culture of complicity within the company. No one would have ever said anything because they wouldn't want to stop the cash stream. And the worst thing is, that, you know, years later, you hear, you know, I hear from agents, oh, we all knew he did this, and we all knew she did that, and we all, but, you know, we just turned our heads because we made so much money. Number seven, Cindy McCain knew what Epstein was doing. 
Similarly to the apparent culture of complicity at Victoria's Secret, Epstein's network of powerful people indicates a similar culture among the elite. In a 2002 magazine article, Trump called Epstein a terrific guy, adding, it is even said he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. Epstein was associated with business executives, politicians, and even royalty. Considering the extent of Epstein's crimes, it's hard to believe that none of the powerful people around him knew something was off. In fact, Cindy McCain admitted she and others were aware of his misdeeds. We all knew what he was doing, but we had no one that would go after him. They were afraid of him. The wife of late politician John McCain claims there was nothing they could do to stop Epstein, but her comment reveals that those associated with him chose to turn a blind Die. People need to understand the fact that government, the financial world, specifically the banking world, have enabled Jeffrey Epstein's crimes. Number six, L Brands helped Epstein's lawyers. While Epstein's arrest in 2019 sparked societal outrage in the post Me Too era, his arrest in 2006 for similar charges gained little attention. He was convicted of procuring a minor for prostitution and of soliciting a prostitute, but faced a little more than a year in prison. The end result was a lot of nothing. It was a slap on the wrist. The Oregon Attorney's General investigation found evidence that indicates Epstein's lawyers received voluntary help from Wexner's company, then known as L Brands. Without being subpoenaed, the company handed over records on one of the felon's accusers who had worked for Victoria's Secret. These records were not subpoenaed. They were provided voluntarily by L Brands, aiding Epstein. This information was never publicly reported. Wexner's attorneys have called these allegations false. In any case, after his first conviction, Epstein's reputation stayed pretty much intact. Jeffrey Epstein continued his lifestyle and pretty much said after the Florida conviction, this was nothing worse than stealing a bagel. Number five. YLK Fund. I got a tip that I should look into certain charitable funds associated with Wexner. Around the time of Epstein's case in 2006, a charitable fund was opened with Les Wexner's wife Abigail as president. The fund was under the initials YLK, the same as Abigail's father Yehuda L. Koppel. In 2019, it was discovered that more than $46 million had been placed in the fund by Epstein. It begs the question, why would a billionaire take money from a convicted felon? Wexner claims the money was stolen from him by Epstein, but then why why wouldn't the CEO have pursued legal action? Wexner is known as being litigious, and yet he won't pursue Epstein for stealing millions upon millions of dollars. The whole thing is strange, but the main takeaway is that Epstein and Wexner continued to be financially involved after the offender was convicted. Why didn't you sue him? What's that all about? I don't know, I, it just, it just doesn't seem to add up to me. Number four, Epstein constantly taped his house guests. As early as 1996, it was reported that Jeffrey Epstein was constantly recording inside his properties. It describes the spy style James Bond bathroom connected to CCTV cameras throughout the premises. Cameras were placed in bedrooms and bathrooms, violating a wide variety of intimate moments. Assuming he was taping while conducting illegal activities, it's possible that others who participated in Epstein's misdeeds were caught on camera. It suggests that the felon used his trafficking business to collect blackmail on influential people. They were taping everybody every moment when he walked into to the New York mansion to Palm Beach, everything was being filmed. Although it's unknown where the material is today, a former sheriff's officer named John Mark Dugan claimed to have 700 CDs full of evidence before escaping to Russia. With potential ties to Russian President Vladimir Putin, Epstein's sphere of influence is seemingly never ending. No one has ever been able to establish that Epstein, in fact, did have recordings, but all you need is the fear of exposure for that kind of power to accrue to him. Number three, Southern Air Transport. 
Speaking of spheres of influence, Wexner and Epstein may have had connections to intelligence. In the mid-1990s, Wexner assisted in relocating Southern Air Transport from Miami to Columbus, Ohio. The cargo airline had previously been owned by the CIA and played a key part in the Iran-Contra scandal. Now it's a private company, but its competitors still call it the CIA's favorite airline. Epstein had spent a considerable amount of time with then-President Bill Clinton just before the airline's relocation. In addition to having close relationships with American presidents, Epstein also boasted of relations with the CIA. Epstein visited the Clinton White House 17 times. 12 of those times happened in 1994 alone. Both men were connected to the state of Israel, and Abigail Wexner's father was one of the founding figures. With so many connections but little concrete evidence, the extent of either man's relationship with intelligence is unknown to the public. Epstein was always in the background, moving money around on behalf of Wexner. And Wexner's money was the engine for organizations which had enormous political influence. Number two, Jeffrey Epstein came between Les Wexner and his mother, Bella. A master networker, Epstein wormed his way into the lives of the rich and powerful. Epstein was uh, extraordinarily mesmerizing and could convince anything of anybody. In his pursuit of Les Wexner, the financier caused a division between the CEO and his own mother. While Wexner had never felt greatly supported by his father, he had historically had a good relationship with his mother, Bella. I think it takes a very unusual parent to encourage a kid to start his own business and to keep saying, you know, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. The two had offices across from each other and were even referred to as married. When Bella briefly fell ill, Epstein took her spot on the Wexner Foundation board. He refused to relinquish the seat back to her once Bella recovered, and Les did nothing to resolve the following lawsuit. The incident ended up causing a rift between mother and son. There's no question in my mind that uh, Jeffrey Epstein came between Les Wexner and his mother, Bella. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some dishonorable mentions. Heidi Klum always wanted the biggest wings. For Victoria's Secret Angels, size does matter. And we gave them to her, ones that were 10 feet, 12 feet tall. Victoria Stewart White is a fictional person. Internal videos reveal Victoria's secret identity. Victoria is this smart, savvy woman, lived in London. Her husband was a barrister. It was a fantastic story, and it was a very powerful tool. Les Wexner referenced Playboy magazine. The retail mogul basically requested models that could pass as Playboy bunnies. He was so adamant that I go after perfect women, a la sexy girls next door, that he actually made arrangements for me to fly to Chicago and have lunch with Christy Hefner. Federal agents may have known about Epstein's fate in prison. Even those who don't believe in conspiracies have to admit something's off. He said to me on the phone, Conchita, Epstein will not make it to trial. I said, what do you mean? And he said, just listen to what I'm telling you. And he repeated his statement. Harvey Weinstein and Ed Razick worked together on the 2000 Victoria's Secret fashion show. Birds of a feather flock together. And the fact that Weinstein, at the suggestion of Razik, might show up trying to get a young woman a job is not only poor form, it's tasteless. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Jeffrey Epstein claimed he was working for Victoria's Secret. As was mentioned earlier on our list, Epstein never technically worked for Victoria's Secret or its parent company. However, he claimed association with the lingerie brand in order to lure in young women. She said she had been informed that a man was in New York portraying himself as a recruiter for Victoria's Secret catalog models. Incidents of this happening were reported to Wexner in 1993. 
The CEO claims to have forbidden Epstein from ever doing so again. However, in 1997, actress Alicia Arden agreed to a meeting in Epstein's hotel room under the impression it would land her in the Victoria's Secret catalog. Instead of booking a gig, Arden filed a sexual battery report. The docu-series includes an audio recording Arden left for her friend after the incident. And then I thought, I should really go file a police report. I don't know what this person just did to me. Whether or not Wexner told him to stop, Epstein continued to use the Victoria's Secret brand for his misdeeds. Epstein was going to use whatever he needed in order to lure these girls. And he does this, of course, for his pleasure and for the pleasure of others. Others who he intends to influence and manipulate. Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.